This lesson covers California 8th grade science content standard 2E, which states that students know that when forces on an object are unbalanced, the object will change its velocity. That is, it will speed up, slow down, or change direction. In standard 2F, which states that students know that the greater the mass of an object, the more force is needed to achieve the same rate of change in motion. The learning objectives, or things you should be able to do at the end of this lesson, are as follows. You should be able to describe how unbalanced forces cause velocity to change, explain how the acceleration of an object depends on the net force acting on the object, and you should be able to explain how the acceleration of an object depends on the object's mass. The main idea of this lesson is that unbalanced forces cause accelerations. Acceleration is generally thought of as when something speeds up, but you should be aware that an acceleration can, be, can also be when an object is slowing down. That would be acceleration in a negative direction. So when acceleration happens, an object is either going to speed up, slow down, or change direction. So we just learned that unbalanced forces cause accelerations. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. Let's say we have a skateboard here, and it's moving toward, to the right. All right, let's, here, let's draw a little guy here on the skateboard. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so... Unbalanced forces that are applied to an object in the same direction as the motion will cause that object to speed up. So, for example, all right, if our little skateboarder here was traveling this way and somebody came up behind him and applied an additional force in that same direction, he'll speed up. All right, you just kind of imagine that you riding along on a skateboard and somebody comes and gives you a little bit of an extra push, you'll speed up. Now, on the other hand, when an unbalanced force is applied in the opposite direction, it will cause you to slow down. Okay? So if you're riding along on your skateboard and you're not pushing yourself, you're not going to you know, coast forever. You'll eventually slow down. And, because, and the force that's slowing you down that's acting in the opposite direction, as you might remember from a previous lesson, is friction. Okay? And so friction is the force that is opposing the motion that slows you down. All right. You can also have a friend come up and push in the other direction, and it'll slow you down pretty quickly, and it'll probably cause you to stop. But again, unbalanced forces that are applied in the opposite motion slows things down. And if it's applied in the same direction as the motion, it causes them to speed up. Now, you can also cause an object to change direction. So, for example, if a force, if you're cruising along your skateboard and somebody, you know, applies a force in this direction, it'll cause you probably to go off in this way. Okay, so forces applied to moving objects or unbalanced forces will cause an object to either speed up, slow down, or change direction. Okay, so you just need to remember that because we know that unbalanced forces cause changes in motion. And so once again, you're either going to speed up, slow down, or change direction. And this is the same reason that, for example, if someone tosses a ball through the air it doesn't go in a straight line like it would in space okay the ball you toss the ball and it kind of goes and then it starts to curl down towards the earth because the unbalanced force of gravity is acting upon that ball and it causes it to change directions okay without gravity all right it would just continue in a straight line all right and this brings us to newton's second law of motion Okay, which states that the acceleration of an object okay, is equal to the net force acting on that object divided by the mass of the object. Okay? And you'll often see it um, written like A equals F over M. Okay? So, and the units for the acceleration is, I'm just going to put the units over here. Okay, the units for the acceleration is meters per second squared. So if you're ever looking for acceleration in a problem, you want to make sure you don't forget the units. If for some reason you're looking for force, um, you know already or you should know that the force is newtons. And the mass is going to be measured in kilograms. So these are the units that are going to be associated with uh, this problem. You'll have to look at the next video, and I'm going to show you some examples of how to work problems um, using these formulas. Now, you might see this formula written a lot of different ways, okay? And there's three variables. You got the A, the F, and the M. 
Now we can write it in different, um, we can use different forms, but it's the same thing. You might see it written as this. If we were trying to get solve for f, okay, you'd multiply m by both sides, and f would equal m times a. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. All right, this is the exact same equation, just written a different way. All right, if we wanted to write it in terms of m, we could say mass is equal to the force divided by the acceleration. All right, again, these are all the same equations. We're just writing it in different ways. And you'll have to watch the next video to see examples of me working these problems, just so you can get a better feel for it. All right. So um, just to give you another visual, okay, let's say here we have balance forces. All right. So here we have 60 newtons of force applied to this object from the left and 60 newtons from the right. And so our net force would be zero. And then so therefore our forces are balanced and this box doesn't move. Okay. In this example, we have unbalanced forces. All right. We have 20 and they're going in opposite directions again. We have 20 newtons of force from this way and 60 newtons of force from this way. So our forces are unbalanced, and we already know that unbalanced forces cause accelerations. In this case, the largest force is going to the left, and so our net force is going to be in that direction, and it'll be the difference between the two. So this box will move to the left with a net force of uh, 40 newtons. If we happen to know the the mass of this box, we could figure out the acceleration, how fast it's accelerating um, in that direction. And just to give you uh, in another visual, let's see here, we have, I want to show you an example here. Okay. All right. So here's an example. Uh, of what we call uh, centripetal force. All right, so pretend like we have a person that's swinging a ball around on a string, all right? And this string is going around and around and around, okay? So if the ball was uh, right here, for example, at this point, the velocity would be in this direction, you know, and the velocity is constantly changing. At this point, it'd be to the left. Once it got here, it'd be down. And once it got here, it'd be this way, okay? and there's this thing called centripetal force, and this is a force that is perpendicular to the velocity. Now, remember, perpendicular means at, at like a 90-degree angle. So these lines are perpendicular to each other, which is different than lines that might be parallel. And so you can see here that the centripetal force okay, is always perpendicular to the velocity and towards the center. So in this case, the centripetal force is right here, right here right here and up here in this case and you can see that in each case it's perpendicular and towards the center to the motion of this uh, ball and in this case this ball is constantly accelerating because it's constantly changing direction now to remind you forces or velocity is a vector okay so it has size and direction all right and because the direction is always changing that means that the velocity is always changing. And any time you are changing, that means that you are accelerating. So something traveling in a circle is experiencing constant acceleration. Okay? It might be moving at the same speed, but it's constantly accelerating because it is constantly changing direction. So you could be driving around a curve at a constant speed, but you would be accelerating because around that curve you'd be changing directions. All right. Now, which brings me to Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So you might see this, for example, if you are playing pool or billiards. Okay, you shoot, you you hit, use your pool stick, all right, and, it, and that ball hits another ball and causes it to, you know, go off as well, and it'll leave at the same exact speed as the ball that hit it. All right, so every action has an equal and opposite reaction. For example, let's say we have a book sitting on a table. Okay, that book is has the downward force of gravity acting upon it. Okay, and if the book's not moving, that means that the forces must be balanced. 
So we have gravity acting straight down towards the center of the Earth, and pushing up with the same exact amount of force is the normal force. Okay, and without gravity, the book would just float away because the forces would become unbalanced, and without the normal force, the book would move towards the Earth. Okay, so for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And I want to highlight this by showing you a cool example. So you've all probably jumped before, but what you don't realize is that when you jump, all right, you are exerting a force on the ground. And in turn, the ground pushes back. So in a sense, when you jump off the ground, is really what happened is you can think of it as like the ground kind of pushed you off because you can't just stand still and just float away. When you jump, you exert a downward force onto the floor, and then the floor pushes back with that same amount of force. And if you've put enough force downward, the, for the, the floor will push back with enough force that allows you to temporarily overcome the force of gravity, and then you lift off the ground. Okay? So you can think about it in a number of ways. You know, when you um, push against the wall. Okay, if you push against the wall really hard, you'll move backwards, and that's because the force you pushed against the wall with was equaled by, or the wall reacted and pushed back and caused you to move backwards. So and it takes a minute for you to wrap your head around that, but just remember that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and that is Newton's third law of motion. So here are our learning objectives again. Pause the video, read over the learning objectives, and see if you can do each of these things. If not, go back into the video, watch a little bit again until you can be able to achieve these learning objectives.